long. Let's drill into the price of oil because we have seen it at very elevated levels. And we're going to keep talking about the price of gasoline. Of course, you can't have oil at these levels without some question about how that affects the costs for those traveling by car. And that would be a refrain if the world were completely normal. As the U.S. gets back to normal, we will hear more and more conversation about the cost to travelers in the summer months. Some Canadians may well hope to travel in this country, as we do know from Nick Nanos and Nanos Research, uh, that may be in lieu of typical travel abroad. The cost to doing so will be higher. Just last week, we found that one of the more economical ways of getting from A to B in this country is no longer Greyhound, closing its service officially across the country after not enough uptake on some of those routes for too long. But does that spell opportunity for some other companies? One of them is called Megabus. Uh, it, it Just the day after that announcement from Greyhound announced new service to Ottawa. Colin Emerson is VP of Retail at Megabus and joins us now. Colin, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. So just paint the picture for us of uh, where Megabus fits in the landscape and whether you see the news from Greyhound as an opportunity for you. Sure. So Megabus has been through different brands operating in, in Ontario and Quebec for, for over 60 years, obviously on routes other than, than Toronto, Ottawa and, and you know, the, the recent one we've announced, but, but certainly on Toronto, Kingston, Montreal, Toronto, Niagara Falls. We've operated throughout the pandemic with enhanced cleaning, social distancing on board, and and certainly as we, we hopefully move towards the end of it, we see opportunities with the the kind of pent up demand for travel coming when when we hopefully very soon get to see the the pandemic shift to the rearview mirror. We, I mean, we have a sense that there are some communities that are kind of left bereft uh, by this decision by Greyhound. Uh, certainly, we know that political officials are are mindful of that. Have you heard from anybody at any level of government about how you could fill in gaps in places that now exist where they're now hard to reach? Uh, we we've been in talks for for a number of months. You know, we're always in talk with with the government on on various issues. Um, specifically relating to this, no, we have not. Um, we we did see the opportunity with the Toronto Ottawa service to to move ahead as as quickly as we did, announcing last Friday that we'll start service this week, and we're looking at other opportunities in in Ontario and Quebec to to see what else can be done in the coming future. One of the big moves that you're making uh, in the Toronto area is uh, moving from the bus terminal, which is uh, pe people who are familiar with Toronto will know closer to uh, Young and Bay Street and Dundas rather, down to Union uh, Station, which is a big, obviously a big transportation hub. Why the move, and what does it signify for you? Um, the move is is mainly you know connectivity, as you, as you mentioned, it's a it's a big hub. Lots of our customers, you know, come from other places, other modes of travel, um, and, and we just saw an opportunity, a more, a bit of a more central location, but I think the connectivity to, to other modes of transportation was, was a big driver for us. So how, just paint the picture of what opportunity is there for Megabus? You've existed in two provinces for some time now, as you say. Do you have ambitions to be national? What's your kind of growth strategy? Um, I think obviously with with the current environment, it's it's you know we need to make sure we get through the next couple of months. Make sure you know we 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 do right with with what we have out there now. But but certainly um, when we look at where we have operations in, in Ontario and Quebec, that would be our our initial focus. Um, and like I said, we're we're looking at opportunities elsewhere as as we go on. How has the pandemic been for you? What were the implications for you as people were you know forced to, to try to stay as much as possible at home? Um, it's it's certainly been tough. We've had you know massive, uh, just a massive drop in, in demand initially, and and for the most part, we've seen pockets here there where, where things have gotten better. Um, we've even you know made the decision for for safety reasons to limit the capacity on our buses to to fifty percent, guaranteeing an empty seat next to every traveler for for social distancing for you know obvious health reasons. Um, we're starting to in, in in certain places in North America see see improvements, see rebounds. Uh, more so in, in the United States than, than Canada right now. But, but you know, we, we know that in talking to our customers and hearing from our customers, a lot of the surveying we've been doing, the, you know, they're just eager to get the vaccine, um, see numbers come down and, and get back to, to traveling as, as soon as possible. And we're just really excited for that day. And obviously the safety of both your staff and the travelers will be a big part of the equation. 
are, what's your expectation of what kind of level of vaccination you'll require for people to be maskless, for instance, or will you be asking for masks for some time? Have you thought through kind of this transition period that lies ahead? I think I think when it comes to health, we'll follow the recommendations by you know the the various agencies in, in the different countries we operate in, what they recommend, um, and and go from there. Where you know we're, we're certainly in touch with with various officials. We're certainly in touch with you know paying attention to any directives or any any change in policy coming out. But but we think we would probably be best to leave that to the the experts in the field, and, and they'll follow their advice. You, you're known for uh, offering uh, low-cost fares. Uh, in terms of your own ability to continue to operate at a discount, given everything you've gone through, and as we were talking about the high price of fuel you face, what's your expectation of what will happen to fares in the future? Um, fares, you know, we we see ourselves as, as offering really good value, and you know, the more the more people we get on board, you know, the, the better it is. The more we're we're able to keep those those fares down. Um, obviously, we, our, our model works very similar to the airlines. The, the busier the day of travel, the more in advance you're booking. Um, big factors in, that goes into you know what what the price will be. So it does does fluctuate heavily on, on demand and, and seasonality. But you know we're we're very you know we're very proud of the good value fares that we've offered throughout our history, and that we we will certainly continue to offer going forward. What did it mean for you when Greyhound said it was it was closing its operations? Were you surprised by that? Um, yes, obviously the, you know, touching back to the, the impacts the pandemics had, had on us, it, it certainly hasn't been easy, um, and, and certainly don't want to see things like that happening. Um, so it's, it's, it's certainly tough to see, um, you know, we're, we're in a lot of competitive markets across North America and, and we don't want to see any, anybody in the bus industry, you know, go through something like that. So, um, yeah, it's, it, it does, you know, we, Toronto Auto is something we've been looking at other other opportunity to other routes in, in Ontario is certainly something we've been looking at, but um, obviously the, the decision and the news that came out last week was, was has certainly prompted us to, to move maybe a little bit faster than we were thinking a little while ago.